afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd love to welcome you to the um, talk that I'm going to have with artist Siga Passi. Um, we're very honoured to have Siga here today, and he's going to be able to talk about his wonderful group of works um, that are very recently made, um, at the end of 2010 and 2011. So we have some questions. Uh, we're just going to um, have a chat that way for a while and just see how that goes. September 1942 into the Dawa tribe. I paint seascape, landscape, and portrait. I am intentionally self-taught and have been an artist since my early childhood days. Yeah, that's very unusual. Um, the same in Australia and in the world too. We have artists who are born to paint, mm -hmm. and I think that you were one of those. And it must have been made you feel quite different from some of the other students and some of your friends. Mm -hmm. But it was your mother that really encouraged you, wasn't it? Oh yeah. I got the more list of the uh, I can share with you. Yeah. From my family. From my mother. From very early. In my childhood, I possessed a natural ability and a deep desire to express myself through my painting. As a young boy, I used charcoal and various and variety of crushed stones mixed with salt water to create my colors and write pandanas fruit as brasses. <laughs> Clam cell became my paint container and I used the milk from certain island weeds mixed with charcoal to make temporary body tattoo. Many of my early watercolors were done on large flat rocks that I found locally. 
And did your mother help you to get the watercolour paints? Oh yeah, when, when, you went, to, uh, went to PI for check-up. Yeah. Yeah. She bought me some uh, watercolours and brushes. Yeah. She must have been uh, very proud of you. And she gets more drawn. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you must have um, spent a lot of time when you were growing up observing people and different landscapes. And I'm remembering some of those beautiful drawings of the children in the Margaret Laurie collection. Um, they have wonderful expressions. They're very expressive. Their faces. You must have really looked hard at people um, just to see how they walked, how they carried themselves, the structure of their faces. Were you like that, always staring at yeah. people? Yeah. I, I haven't been to that uh, library yet. Maybe after this. Yeah. One. They're, they're reproduced I'll, I'll in the catalogue. They're in the catalogue. You know, there are, there are three, three of them I, I sketched them. Charles, Charles Passy, Deborah, his sister Deborah and Maria. When they were young. Yeah. yeah. When I was, yeah, I, I sketched. How old were you then? Oh, it's around now. Uh, yeah. I was a house painter, I was walking up. Uh -huh. house painter. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so you, I I hope you stuck to the <laughs> colours. I hope you didn't play around with the colours. Give people yeah. murals on I like colours, you know. <laughs> you like colours, but so you like blue then. One time uh, we paint around Tamai Town in the houses. So me and my countryman, we had one house of uh, Auntie Nawini. I said I named him, I didn't call him this guy. Alright, you paint that one. I said to my uh, countryman, you paint this color. And inside, you put that color. Before you paint, you see all them uh, colors of uh, furniture, or chairs, table. Then we put the wall this color. So, so you, you designed it all? Yeah. It, it, it was very close to uh, Christmas, Christmas day. So we, when we were outside painting, one of the ladies, white lady, passed. He said, hey, he said, that's a different answer I saw. Very beautiful, that color. <laughs> The colour is beautiful, more than the other cottages around the Oh, I wish I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds very beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you were always an artist in everything you did? I went to railway, I still paint. Yeah. I done some drawings of the boys. Asked yeah. me to paint. And even when you went to New Guinea, you took your sketchbook? Yeah, I went to New Guinea yeah. from now. Uh, 1964, well, I involved with uh, students, you know, theological. Yeah. At Moana. Yeah. That was the last uh, last year, my first year. Uh, yeah. The college was closed, so the bishop sent us to Papua New Guinea, yeah. northern district, not western district, but northern. Mm -hmm. To learn the Papuanui from there. To pop on the next day. And I bought with me uh, some color, color pencil and sketch. Yeah. This line. Yeah. And I also bought some filler. I got auto uh, camera with me. Yeah. So, uh, so I can take all the different different uh, churches we visit. So I went there, so I took all the pictures, go, I took my film, I ran out of film. So when we visit next uh, village, I can take any picture anymore, so I use, I sketch all the pictures right through.
<laughs> people and places. All people. this, all the churches you visited. Yeah, everything. I paid for them. Yeah. But what about when you were young, when you were at school? Um, I think you told me you were quite popular for some of the subjects that you would draw for the other kids on yeah. their slate. Or when you were at uh, primary school, I think grade one, grade one or two, and you know, we used to draw on slates. We used to have slates and slate pencil. So when when in art class, all them, all my fellow students, you know, they part on the slate for me to finish the drawing. So I help. I started help from there. I still go on helping. And I'm looking forward to help for the young generation, for the young people. I told my family back home, while I'm still here, come. I teach you how to paint. <laughs> that sounds like a good philosophy. I'll go along with that. Um, but I, what I was getting at too, like what was your favorite subject to paint? Oh, my favorite subject at the time. Uh, Super, Superman, that was my comic book hero. <laughs> Flower, peace, but... Not Batman. Not Batman, Superman. Because yeah, okay. The only comic we had yeah. by comic, Superman. <laughs> now, we have behind us a set of very beautiful paintings yeah. that you've made, especially for the gallery. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you probably remember when I went up there to visit you and we were talking about what you might paint and, you know, we had a lot of discussion. And then you showed me this little set of cards that you'd made uh, where you'd been teaching at the school and um, you wanted to particularly teach the school children how to be safe at sea. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us why that was so important, you know, the event that happened up there with those three young men? Yeah, first of all, that uh, all the teachers asked me to, uh, you know, teach uh, culture, culture within children. So I, I talked to the children in class about weather, about cloud, but they were just sitting there. Some of them noticed, some of them play around, you know. Don't take any notice because they can picture anything in their mind. But I was talking about rain cloud, they don't know. So I decided to make painting, small painting, card like uh, pictures. So it will help me when I it helps me when I talk to them, they, they see it on the picture. So I still have the pictures and I still talk to the children. When Diane was visiting our island, I saw, I saw the cards for Diane. And she asked me to, uh, she told me about the uh, theme of that uh, exhibition, Land, Sea and Sky. I said, all right. I can draw one from land, another one from sea, another one from sky. But when she saw all the cards, she said, you draw all, something like that. It's cool. I don't like to draw just cloud, just cloud, just water. I don't like it. I like if the water is there, you like a uh, boat or fisherman. It's all coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't argue. So one time I asked her, one time I asked her, Diane, if I can draw with the sunset. Yeah. It's all going wrong. <laughs> if I can draw uh bird. But she said no. 
this cloud. <laughs> when I go, next time you ask me, I'll go anything. <laughs> Turn up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted the branch in there. So, she asked me to draw ten paintings. Look at these ten paintings. When I first came in, I look at the picture, I saw it. I saw it in my picture. Because I, when I saw the pictures, I think of my outdoor studio. Out of studio, only dining room. My table with all the rubbish around me. Oh, how much rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> so, from my out of studio, all the paintings come out. This one is a stone cloud. In Miriam we call it Kub. Kub, you know, the rain is coming. This one. But when the rain suddenly stopped, it looked like this one. So we got two names for the plant. When the train when the train coming from this one. I go out to this one. Because the weather will be rough. But when the rain stops, it turns out like this. This picture here. So we've got two names for this one. Go. Deo. Deo. That's a Miriam line. It's a new one in different angle. Did you ever notice the oh, sorry? The new one? For the first time ever. You have to study. Now this you have to uh, when you see the every month you, you see the moon in different angle. See the two? When it's rough, you can see the water, the rough in the cloud. If you see the moon like this, you know the wind will die up. Next day, they will be fine. This one, the next one, if the weather is calm, and the moon will be like this, land, sunshine. You know, it will be the wind will start to rise. Next day. This one is a uh, all the two moon in Miriam we call it Kerkar Med. Kerkar is new moon is Mev. New moon. Kerkar Mel. This one here, the painting, the story about this cloud. Look the other cloud, this one here, the youth one. When you saw this cloud, like today, on the northwest, Northwest side of the island, I told of Marian. You know that wind will be blowing in that direction. But when it sits to west on the next day, you know that wind will be blowing.
from the wind. The cloud tell you the story. It was not for me. Well, the cloud name uh, the big cloud name Little Little in Miriam. This cloud here, a different design. You can see it any time, midday, afternoon. You see it in the afternoon, you know, it will be rain. Tonight, not next day, not next week, tonight, it will be raining. This design. The very name for this cloud is Ab Kippur. Ab Kippur. That one here, when you see that the cloud here in the afternoon, and that small cloud pull itself out from that big cloud, shower, for a bit of shower, rain, you know it will be. For this cloud, you, most of the piece of the cloud you see on the month of November, November, December, and January. But I think this cloud you see on the month of October, it tells you that it could be rain, heavy rain, heavy rain used to have on November month. The big gardener used to uh, look for this sign here. When I started gardening, well, my uncle told me about this cloud. So I had to prepare my garden for planting. When I saw that cloud, I put all the seeds inside. For the wet season starts on November, when you see this cloud, this other cloud. This cloud, we, they, we call it uh, in Miriam, Hermel Bars, rain cloud. Hermel, rain, bars, this cloud. Remember by rain cloud. This one here, you might have named for the cloud in English when you saw the things I uh, explained to you. This one used to appear during the day or sometime in the night. If you see, see this sort of cloud appear in the west, like I'm at Mari, then I look at this sort of cloud appear in the west. Then we know that we hear the sad news from our loved ones. In TI, down south, it's a sign of it. It tells you that your loved one will pass away. Same as this one here. Or the, the name for this one is uh, Table bomb. Table bomb. Red car.
That one here, same, tell the same story, but that one, the other one. But got a small space on the cloud. The small space tells you that someone will pass away, your relatives or up here, mostly on the west. The next day or next month, you hear your family passed away. So if there are two signs, then you hear that news from your family. Table book, this small space you call it Mikes. Mikes. Guest in a small space where you can see the sky in the earth. Called the Mikes. The last one. See the cloud lined up. First time you see on the evening or night time. So different. Easy name for this cloud here. When you see this cloud, you know the turtle, golden turtle, will go up for nesting. When you see this cloud, all our parents say, hey, go, I can turtle, turtle the same way. When we go, we can find turtle. So this sort of cloud. His name is easy. Miriam name. Dad. Not dad. We call him like it. Dad. Dad. Oh, here we are. Dad. When you see this cloud, you know. That one used to go out. For nesting. Back home, if you visit us on uh, October, November, December, turn to the end they come up with this thing. So I hope everyone, you can remember all the clouds. We are you going to turn the children in all day? Ask any people any time you see them come out, come out and go. Yes, some of them do. But Tiga, it's not just for fun that you teach the kids, is it? Because there was a very serious accident yes. with those three boys that um, <coughs> they nearly passed away. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Yes. I'd like to uh, read this one here. Uh, I wrote, I sold it to uh, Diane. I said to her, you, you can correct my English. <laughs> what makes me share my knowledge with you about the weather in my painting? You might have heard about three of our young men from Mer Mariano who were afloat for three weeks, 21 days. In cyclonic weather, the cyclone was close to a uh, camp at the time. They survived only on rainwater, raw fish, and squid. It is very important for young people to ask questions. Otherwise, things might happen to you, too, like the young men I, I mentioned. We all need advice from people older than us. We also have new systems in place, but not all of us use them. That's why I have made this painting. All you. Thank you very much, Stella. So next time when I visit, I'll ask you, you tell me, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I was going to ask you what. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you what's next for you, but you've already told me you're going to paint anything you want to. <laughs> anything. No dogs, no birds. I mean, yes, as many dogs as birds. So I could go on to it. Just in my heart. I just want to say with you again my knowledge of how our ancestors came to know about the culture. Everyone got our ancestors. They came to know about their culture through studying other creations, such as sun, moon, stars, clouds, wind, fish, birds, trees, plants, and animals. They all study. They never been to call it for they live in some way around in the bush, but they study for the other creation. That's why they come to know about the culture for our ancestors. The creation was not set in place just to decorate the universe. The creator himself speaks to our ancestors through his creation. He told them the right time to plant, to go out fishing, to travel, and read signs of rain. rough and fine weather, etc. Our culture was handed down from generation to generation. We don't have to adopt culture from other countries or places. We have our own God-given culture and we are proud of it. Thank you. Thank you.